process now where I'm going to take my seal puller and I'm going to pull the seal out. I will then lift the bearing out and then I will bang the race out. Cool. <laughs> so there's my seal. Another slinger. Here's the bearing. And now I'm going to drive the race out with a brass drift. gear in and I've set, set the backlash to seven thousandths. The factory service manual says anywhere between five thousandths and ten thousandths and I got seven thousandths. So I'm on my next step. I'm using some marking compound and I'm painting a few teeth here and I'm getting ready to rotate it around and then I'm going to check my pattern to see how they look on the, on the coast and the drive sides. Okay and then we will take a good look at them. So that's as far as I've gotten so far. Okay, here's what we did. Since I'm using the original carrier, we installed the original shim packs with the setup bearings on the carrier. This resulted in zero backlash. It also gave us a tight pinion. I moved a 6,000 shim from the ring side of the carrier to the other side, which gave us a 7,000 backlash. But I didn't like this pattern. So I added a 4,000 shim, making the pinion deeper and getting the pinion rotation where it was good. This gave me a 6,000 backlash and a good pattern. I'll bring you over here and I will show you my dial indicator and what a backlash looks like. This is my dial indicator. And now that I'm all set up and how I know that I've got the right backlash, the dial indicator is set at zero. So if I just move the pinion, or I'm sorry, if I just move the ring gear back and forth, you can see it goes to six thousandths. And I believe the book said between five and ten thousandths is the desired um, backlash. See, we get zero and six. And all I am doing is rotating the uh, carrier and, and ring just a little bit. Okay. And then, now that I have my desired backlash and everything's torqued down, I take some marking compound and I will paint about five or six different teeth. And then what I will do is I will rotate the pinion and I will run it the ring down to the pinion and then what that does is it gives me a pattern on my teeth and when I ran that first pattern I didn't like it which is why I changed the four thousandths out on the teeth where they curve the inside of the curve is called the coast side on the outside of the curve it's called the drive side and let's see if I can get you to see that one Okay, this is a desired pattern. This is nice and strong. It's got a nice pattern right in the center part there. My next step is to remove the carrier, take off my setup bearings that I have, and I'm going to be press on, pressing on the, the good bearings that I'm going to be using. I'm also going to clean up this paint that I have on here, and I'm going to put it off to the side I have an Aussie locker that's coming, so I'll be installing the Aussie locker. I'm going to be removing these knuckles because I'm not using these. I am using the flat top knuckles from that W150 that I have. The, pa the uh, passenger side I have to have machined. I'm going to send them out 
to parts mic and he's going to machine them for my flat top steering arms. I'm going to be pressing the new seals in. I'm also going to be cleaning out the inside of the tubes. There's a lot of dirt built up in there, a little bit of rust. I bought a really cool brush that I believe I can fit right down inside here. Um, and what I'm also going to be doing is throwing on a coat of paint. So what you see here will be all freshly painted. Also one other thing that I'm going to be doing to this housing besides painting it is where the breather vent was, it's fallen out when we were moving it around. They just sat in there. I had on Old Blue, the first axle I ever set up, the YJs have this little plastic fitting that goes in here. That had failed on me, and not knowing this, I was in a lot of water. Ended up getting a lot of stuff inside my differential and ended up screwing up a lot of stuff in there. So that was my first axle that I built. So ever since then, what we do, we take the little plastic fittings out, and we will drill and tap this, and we will add this new fitting, which will go down inside here, and then this is where we will run our uh, breather vent up. I will also be doing this same thing on the T18 that I have sitting on the floor right down there in front of you. This is a nice little upgrade to it. It's been a long three days. It's about 10 o'clock at night right now and uh, I'm a little tired but you know what it was all well worth it because I know in the end I am going to enjoy my new axles. I zoomed in on the 4WD valve cover. Can you still see me? I can now, yeah. Oh, okay. It's been a long three days, but I know in the end this is going to be well worth it because you know why? Jeep is unconditional love. It's got to be because if you don't have unconditional love for your Jeep, you should not own one because let me tell you, they are trying every now and then, our patients. <laughs> And yes, it is just empty every pocket, and yes, you are usually working on them more than you're actually off-roading, but you know what? That's why it's unconditional love. Um, thanks for joining me on this three-day journey that we had, and towards the end of the week, I have a road trip coming up, and it's to a place that uh, is really going to be cool. Thank you for joining me, and if you have any questions or comments, Send them off to me at vermontjeepgirl at hotmail.com. And thank you very much for hanging out with me for the past three days. And I look forward to seeing you again. Have a good night. Yeah, good.